God discussing uh, uh, the earth and how to operate it from the uh, uh, mountain, the didn't perg- that, Pergamum. Didn't they have that famous picture where the two guys were holding the antennae and it was supposed to, it's earth, and then there was uh, God and Jesus and they were messing with the antennae of earth? <laughs> Trying to get some source material <laughs> here. Uh, uh, our guest today is John McAdam, and and we've been pretty much all over the map. Uh, 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 and 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 what I'd like to point out is kind of a uh, uh, as close to subjective or objective view as I could is that there is a common search for a redefinition of reality that comes with every new generation. I remember as a young man, and I was a teenage Baptist evangelist between ages of 13 and 17. So when you were developing that hardcore Christian belief, I was actually selling it (laughs) (laughs) in the same period of my life. But when that no longer worked, uh, I went one direction. I actually went into Greek theater and Greek mythology, and and I still have those books on my shelf. And then I did some bouncing around in uh, what was known about pre-Columbian cultures, and I was at that point whenever, as a young man, I met Margaret Mead and said, what about that? And she says, we won't know for another hundred years because the Spanish were so brutal in their destruction of those cultures. Which brings to mind a couple of things. People, whether they are right or wrong, will defend their belief system against all alternatives, almost brutally. Do you find that to be true? Uh, I find that to be true, but in this day and age, if we don't agree with somebody, we can't exactly take them out back and shoot them, but we do it in a more polite way, perhaps with a few harsh words, but I do agree with that. We say they're crazy. We say they're ignorant. A- and atheists like to say they're superstitious and nutcases. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so everybody's got their own put down for anybody with a different idea. Why is it p- important to struggle to find a set of ideas that work for us individually? Uh, I've thought of that as well. And I was wondering, as I was going through uh, the spiritual journey that I have been on, as well as the archaeological journey that I have been on, and I find that I am actually made up by the things that I know. So, for example, um, when I see somebody doing nasty things, uh, beating up somebody, or speaking really mean to them, uh, I can actually relate that to something that I've known or something I believe such as uh, spirituality, where the karma is going to come back and get them. Whereas if I was an atheist, I might go and start yelling at them because the only repercussion is they're going to yell back at me. So uh, it's the little details that we can use to define what we do. And it may not seem so painfully obvious, but in the end it makes up who we are. Do you make anything of ghosts and ghost stories and spirits in places? I do. I've had uh, numerous paranormal things happenings that have actually happened to me which as a matter uh, of fact i would be shocked if i had a normal experience <laughs> exactly uh, the f- uh, joke in the paranormal communities they're all normal we're just the ones not believing it oh, okay <laughs> um yeah uh i believe there is enormous amounts of evidence if uh, the scientific and atheist community say ghosts aren't real everybody is just uh hallucinating and my counter to that would be uh, we're not all on drugs you know we're not sniffing crack every day um, if you're at a trial and you've seen somebody murder somebody. But when somebody, you see a ghost, you may get high on your adrenaline. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you had to see the ghost first. Oh, you're right. Um, when, when you're in a courtroom, it takes one person to condemn a man for life. But when millions upon millions of people see ghosts, oh, they're just hallucinating. Uh, I believe that there is more to the phenomenon that uh, is not being accepted, but there is a lot of scientists there are a lot of scientists going around and actually trying to verify them, and uh, I believe they're starting to do a good job. And within the next hundred years, I'm pretty sure that uh, the afterlife is going to be an accepted topic. I'll put my money on that. You think so? I believe so. Evolution is pretty slow when it comes to human acceptance of things. One death at a time. One death at a time. You know the old saying? 
Science yeah. changes one death at well, a time. Well, you know, that's a much more tangible thing at 70 than it is at 21, <laughs> I can assure you. But, but, but the point of it is, as a matter of fact, I got an email from my good friend, uh, the great writer uh, and great college professor, Bill Martinson. Uh, and he said, I hope you're doing well, and except for that Grim Reaper thing, I'm doing all right, too. <laughs> <laughs> We're all aware of our own mortality, but I think, uh, the problem I had when I was 21 was I wasn't as aware of my mortality as I was convinced of my immortality. I thought I was going to live forever, and that didn't work out that way. No, what now? <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, right. <laughs> What's next? Uh, John, have I treated you fairly on the show? Have you had a good time? You've been an excellent guest. Thank you. Or uh, host, sorry. Uh, okay. I'm okay. the guest. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, well you, you can take it over any time. <laughs> John McAdam, a young man uh, who is... Uh, in a challenge school with ideas, which sounds wonderful. He's a writer. You know, I'm a writer, too. Uh, I am finishing up a, a, a screenplay titled Whatever Happened to Anita Bryant, but you wouldn't know anything about Anita Bryant because you had to be at least the generation before you <laughs> that encountered Miss Runner-Up in the Miss America contest. And so uh, you're listening to Ray on the radio, and I... I would be remiss if I got out of the studio without telling any new people listening. I want to thank all of those who have listened. Oh, we've got another caller. You're on the air. Yes, uh, before your guest departs, I'd like to ask him uh, what his uh, future plans are. I mean, he's still gradu currently graduating from high school, and what, what are his plans? Good question. Anything else, or shall I just let you go and listen to him? That's it. Thank you so okay. much. Well, I think I recognize that voice, and he wants to know what lies ahead for John McAdam. Uh, July 21st, I am moving to Colorado. <gasps> Colorado. Yes. Where? Fort Collins. Fort Collins. Is it any good, you know? Well, Fort Collins is a, not, the, not the mountainous. Yes, it is. I, uh, what, what, where I, in Colorado, my favorite place is like up around Grand Mesa. Okay. Actually, there's a town up there named Montrose, which seems almost like home. And uh, 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 you'll understand why they call it Grand Mesa as you approach it, <laughs> because you can see that mesa for hundreds of miles. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, dare I use the word magic, in the Rockies around there. There's, 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 it, it's almost a spiritual journey into the Rockies. And after that, um, have you ever been there? Oh, no. Okay. Uh, uh, academia is actually uh, 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 closer around Colorado Springs and Boulder, uh, uh, where all the academics watch out for Colorado Springs, a bunch of fundamentalists there, <laughs> and the Air Force Academy. Denver is interesting, but be careful, the streets were paved with phosphorus. And so there's a lot of radiation <laughs> in Denver. But uh, when you get uh, past Denver and up close to Boulder, then you can actually smell the academia in the air. It's a college town meant to be a college town, kind of like Austin on stilts. <laughs> what takes you to Colorado? Uh, I can't stand the heat of Houston. I had to come here when I was uh, a kid mm -hmm. because uh, I was born with cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. And being in South Africa, they have this legend there that if you're born with cystic fibrosis, you go to America into a very humid place like Louisiana or Texas, really? and it's supposed to kill the germs, drown the germs in your lungs because Africa is very, very dry, as mm -hmm. you can see by all the deserts. And uh, here it's moist, and it's almost like you're drinking water out of the air. So uh, it cleared up my lungs. Six months after I came here, I had no more symptoms, and now I think it's time for me to move to a place that uh, kind of the environment that I, w I like. And I like the cold, the nine months of snowing out of the year. That's true. It is cold a good bit of the year. And actually, in Farmington, New Mexico, which is just south of the Colorado border, and that's not the high altitude part of Colorado. I've had snowflakes hit my face on the morning of 4th of July. It is still snowing there today, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. And uh, uh, I love the mountains, except when they get really big and scary, like those that you fly around to get to Seattle. I keep thinking, if this thing goes while I'm here, I'm a dead goose. <laughs> uh, <coughs> John McAdams headed for the mountains, and um, take your time traveling in that part of the country. I think that 
the slow passage of miles helps you adapt so by the time you get there you're well adapted a little fatherly advice uh, from Uncle Ray here on Ray on the radio I would be remiss if I did not tell you you were listening to this show by the graces of Houston Media Source you can find out all about Houston Media Source by going to hmstv.org Or if you want to go directly to the radio part, that is hmsnetradio.org, and that will put you right into Robert's lap. Robert is the supervisor of this part of the radio station. And according to an announcement that I heard earlier, uh, I am no longer the only independent producer on this radio station. There's a music show on Saturday night. Uh, I am sure if you will keep on listening to the eclectically powered music that Robert has selected for you, you will hear more about that in just a few minutes. My name is Ray Hill. I have been doing this since I was seven years old. So radio is my natural environment. And if you ever saw me, you would understand why I do a lot better in radio than I do on television, although I am a frequent uh, uh, host Uh, of uh, public affairs, public access, uh, uh, produced by Mark Pirtle on HMS Comcast Channel 17. Or uh, you can get the same channel by uh, going to uh, U-verse, and it's one of the selections at Channel 99. We do radio and television here, and our purpose here is to provide media access for you, meaning you and your peers in your community of thought, whatever ideas you have that you share with others or that you wish to share with others, come on down to HMS or Houston Media Source. We got cameras, we've got lights, we've got instructions. We will help you make media that works for you, and uh, you can throw that on the a heap of ideas in the universal ether, begin people thinking, get discussions going, and there is just uh, the most optimistic expectation of the gratification you'll get from doing that. If you're a community of people, uh, an ethnic community, a racial community, uh, whatever kind of community you come from, that community is unique from other communities and have things to share and expose and get people thinking about who you are and what you do. And uh, uh, the way you do that is you come to Houston Media Source, learn the technology, apply that to your thoughts, ideas, your friends and neighbors. If you are in neighborhood, if you're a part of this wonderful city, you know, you go up on Google Maps up to about a one mile high, and you look, turn around, you look back down, and what you see is a rich tapestry of people of different faiths, different races, different ethnicities, different ideas, all knit together. And this is the thread that binds us all. Houston Media Source. Here, we can share. Here, we can expose ourselves to people, and we can be exposed to people that we know precious little about, but we need to know more. There is nothing more compelling than an idea that is struggling to get out of bondage. Here is where we can cut loose. It's both radio as we are using right now, and television. And since this has been my exciting world, lo, these many decades, I want to encourage you to come share our equipment, our technology, learn from our trainers, practice, practice, practice. Someone say, you know how to get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. Get your ideas in the open marketplace of ideas. Share with others. Access media is perhaps the most promising form. Here it's not prepackaged. Somebody didn't put it together in order to sell you the things they advertise between the scenes. 